Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to another edition of the Pure Cloud Communities Q&A Show. My name is Matt Lawson. I am your online community manager, and today we have a hot episode for you. We are broadcasting live from Scottsdale, Arizona. The heat index is in the 99 degree area, so if I look a little rough, that is why. But I have put my best troops together. We are here to answer your pressing questions in the community. And who else could I enjoy this wonderful weather with other than George Ganahl? George, how are you? Doing great, Matt. It's good to be here. <laughs> Terrific. Yeah, we're enjoying it. We've been out here for a GU Summit. That's Genesis University. And uh, George and I wanted to take the time to uh, help you all out. So, George, the sun is high. Batteries are low. Let's go ahead and hop into the community and answer some questions. Sounds good. All right, George. This first question comes to us from Emily. George, this is a question that you wanted to discuss. And we wanted to discuss it because she started out with one question and then asked another one in the thread that you wanted to come back to. Emily asks, can I sneak in another agent status question? My agents are in a staggered transition from the Pure Cloud browser interface to the desktop app. In the browser, if the agent ex exited Pure Cloud, it would display their status as offline. In the desktop app, it appears that when they exit, it still shows them as available. Is this expected behavior? It appears to be for same day only. For example, an agent that migrated to the desktop app opened up PureCloud this morning and was working for an hour. After that hour, the agent closed PureCloud to work on other tasks. His status still shows as available an hour and a half later. An agent performing the same activities but working out the browser is showing as offline. George, what advice do you have for Emily? Now, this triggered something in my brain which made me realize that not everyone is really used to how the Pure Cloud applications work and how close is different than actually quitting the application on the desktop app. So just for everybody's benefit, I figured I'd throw in a little demonstration here of how it really works in Pure Cloud. Sounds great. So let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll take a look at what it really does in the desktop app in Pure Cloud. Perfect. So here I've got my desktop up, it's in Mac environment, I'll show that first. And I want to just point out that in the Mac environment I've got this red button up here. This is just called basically exiting or closing the client. This is the desktop app, click close, and it looks like it's gone. But if I look down here in the bottom bar, the taskbar shows me that the app is still actually running at the bottom. That's normal for Macs, so most people would understand that. If I want to close the Mac application, the desktop app, I would have to actually quit Pure Cloud. And that way it's actually quit, and now my status would show as offline to other users. Now if I switch over and I look at the Windows environment, I've got my Windows environment running back on my computer at work. Just love this VPN stuff. And in Windows, it's slightly different. So here, in Windows, I've got the X to close the application. If I click X, okay, it's gone. Down here in the taskbar, it's not really showing anything that my application is still running. And that's what's kind of confusing to agents, because they think it's gone, it's closed. But their status would still show as available because here in the taskbar, you can see the Pure Cloud is still running. So I'll bring it back up. Now I actually need to click on the Pure Cloud icon up here in the top left and choose quit, or I can I could right click on the menu bar and choose quit, either one. Once I quit the desktop app, that's when my status switches to offline. So agents normally don't think about that, they'll just hit that X, they figure, oh I closed it, why is my status still available? Why am I still getting calls, that kind of thing. Gotcha. And that's just quick information because most people don't know that about Pure Cloud. Gotcha. Uh, thanks for that, George. Emily, we hope that was helpful. If not, uh, you know, you've done a good job of keeping that thread updated with your thoughts and replies, so just let George know if we can be of any more assistance. That wraps up our first section of the show. Now, the weather has been brutal, but I think I came up with some questions that may be even more difficult to bear. George, you know what time it is. Yeah. yeah. It's time for Stump the Expert. In case this is your first time watching the show, Stump the Expert is where I pick unanswered questions in the community and I pose them to our expert. It's then up to the expert to do their best to answer them. In the event they can't answer the questions, 
It's really not a big deal. Those questions go to our bounty board, where you, our customers and partners, can take your own shot at answering them for some pretty lucrative GCAP points. George, I was really disappointed because last week you didn't get to add any questions to the bounty board. So this week I had to do some extra digging to try to stump you. And I think I may have come up with a few. I'll try to do better, Matt. <laughs> Good. If you could know less about the product, I'd really appreciate it. Let's go ahead and get started with this first question. This question comes to us from Ricardo. Ricardo wants to know about error scheduling callback. Ricardo writes, hello, I'm setting up a callback from an IVR flow. In the flow, I set the number as 003 plus cell phone number, as the following image shows. I'm using the append 003 task number numero, where task numero is the customer phone number. Example, he provides an example. The problem is, when the agent answers the callback, the system changes the number, removing the two zeros on the left. This appears as three plus number instead of zero zero three plus number. Uh, but this is not a valid number in the number plan. How can I fix it? George, what do you think? Any advice for Ricardo? Uh, looks like doing the append, I don't see anything in there that uses the two phone number function to actually turn it into a telephone number before it gets sent in. Um, I'm not sure, uh, just looking at what was in the code there real quick, not sure whether he's um, actually converting it to a phone number somewhere along the way. That number would need to be converted to be able to be used with the 003 in the front of it. It would actually turn it into a a uh, tell colon and then whatever number he puts in to put it in the um, E.164 format. So gotcha. my guess is it's just a string. Uh, maybe he's using it as an integer. If he's using it as an integer value, then it's obviously, it's definitely going to strip off the zero, 00 in the front because that's not a valid inter integer value. Gotcha. Uh, but I'd have to do a bit more research on it and play with it myself to make sure that's the correct answer. All right, Ricardo, that means your question is going to go up on the bounty board. I'm not sure if this completely stumped George. He hopefully gave you some helpful information, but we'll put it up there just so that we can hopefully get you a confirmed answer. Thank you so much, and I hope help, additional help, is on the way. All right, our next question comes from Teha. Teha wants to know how to ignore CC emails. Hello, team. Can anyone tell me how I can ignore CC emails from Architect? I have created an email flow where the email sent to one of the assigned email addresses is in pure cloud is received by the agent. This customer has integrated this with their CRM. The issue is if any of the email IDs assigned in the pure cloud are in the CC of this email, all the agents assigned with those email IDs are receiving the same email and this is creating a loop. Now, I need to check if any of the email ID is in email CC from the IDs assigned in pure cloud is received in this email should be ignored i.e. no action should happen when I try to use a decision by creating email builder there I can just check only few predefined parameters there's a nice little image there how can I check the CC emails from here when I try to work with custom expression I'm receiving the error as there is no implementation that accepts a parameter a type of email any suggestions would be Highly appreciated to solve this. George, what advice do you have for Teha? Yeah, the, basically, the only options that they have are the ones listed in that drop down. Um, I don't remember there being anything to be able to check the CC fields on an inbound email to make a decision based upon those. Uh, once again, I'd have to go back and actually play with it a bit and double check, but I don't think there's a way to actually go into the system and verify the CC emails and, and decide if they exist in pure cloud. Gotcha. Teha, sorry we couldn't be more helpful, but we hope uh, at least we kind of answered your question. This next discussion comes from Edward. Edward wants to know about voicemail and priority. Edward asks, hi, we have a queue that is only for callers to leave voicemails. We would like to attach skill and priority to the voicemail interaction. Therefore, I tried transfer to ACD, setting priority and skill in the IVR flow and then transfer to voicemail in the NQ flow. Doing so, the voicemail should get the priority and skill attached. However, if there was an agent on queue, the transfer to ACD 
will send the call to the agent, and we don't want that. Any suggestions? What do you think, George? Yeah, I looked at this one when it first came in, and it's actually on my backlog of things I should go look at again. Uh, basically, the ability, there is no ability to assign that skill onto a voicemail when it's being created. So what we would need to do is look at the possibility of adding skills via the API, um, which would be kind of complicated, but it might be possible. I just haven't taken the time to dig back in and look at the API to see if that would be something that could be done. Yeah, as he's pointing out, you can't assign the skill to it unless you're transferring it to an ACD queue. And once you transfer to that queue, if there are agents available, it's going to transfer to an agent. It's not going to go to voicemail. Gotcha. So unfortunately, there's no way easily to do it in the interface. Gotcha. All right, Edward, we'll go ahead and uh, leave you with that, and hopefully George can get back with a little bit more information down the road. Thanks so much. All right, George, let's get one more in here. It comes to us from Ben. Ben wants to know about programmatically update queue members. Ben writes, hello, we have a need to add an agent to a specific queue daily from, let's say, 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m to help when other agents are going to lunch. Currently, we are doing this manually. Is there a way to do this programmatically or any clever workarounds for this need? George, what do you think? Any advice for Ben? Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit complicated um, as far as how I have accomplished something like this in the past. But what I have done is I've written a script in Node.js and I've actually used on the Microsoft server the um, ability to schedule an application to run so I would just schedule my script to run whenever we want to add the person to the queue or remove them from the queue. And that can be set on a timer basis, uh, schedule tasks in Windows, and just runs a script, calls the API, and does what we want to do. So I'm pretty sure activating and deactivating agents on queues is part of the API. I can't remember why it would not be. And that's how I would do it myself. George, thanks for all the advice you offered, and uh, everybody, thank you for joining us while we were out here in Phoenix. It looks like the heat may have beaten us more than the questions did this week, but as always, it's a pleasure to, uh, to do these videos, and we always appreciate you joining. Let us know if you have any questions or feedback for the show. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. Thanks for tuning in for this week's episode. We hope it was helpful and maybe a little bit entertaining. Each week, our hosts and experts review community discussions and debate what content to discuss so your voice matters. Do we miss something? Do you have a question for the show? Let us know. Join the conversation at the Genesis online community. As a Genesis customer or partner, you can create an account. Just click the sign-in button found on most pages and follow the necessary instructions to create an account. Also, feel free to email us at qashow at genesis.com. We'd love to hear from you. If this is your first episode, welcome. You can view our entire archives. Go to the helpful links panel found on most community pages and find the QA show archive that interests you. We appreciate your support of the show and the community.